Facebook Live now, and our and our yes. friends are here already. Yay. Hi, friends. Just what I was about to vent about the issues I'm running into on job hunting, and I think I'm going to anyway because this needs to be said. Not that anyone here who listens to the show is probably in this position to start making these changes, but so I have been looking at and potentially applying to many marketing jobs like copywriting, marketing, stuff that I have been doing for years for local businesses that have helped them out a lot. And then COVID, when COVID hit, the first thing to get cut was the marketing budget, which meant me. Uh, <laughs> so I'm seeing these jobs again coming up and these are jobs that pay between 45 to like 75,000 a year, depending on the company size, which actually isn't all that great considering that like, anyone with marketing's got a degree and they have to bring all these things to it and they want work samples of your previous marketing things. Um, the thing that infuriates me, unless you are a tiny, tiny business and you admit to your, to your potential applicants, we are brand new. We understand that we're having to wear many hats right now. We won't stay that way. I can live with that. But if you're marketing yourself as like this really good local company, that has these great values and we need a great marketing person to build our team on the job listing. Don't also say applicant not only needs to have good marketing skills and understand analytics and all that stuff and trends and social media, that's all the marketing stuff, but then don't throw in should be experienced in photography and videography should be experienced in graphics design should have experience in Photoshop. Those are three different fucking jobs. Oh, yes. You are not the only person I've seen talking about this. It is Basically. rampant right now. They are expecting mm -hmm. a marketing person to be a videographer, a photographer, a graphic designer, and also the marketing part. Those are different jobs. Those are three different jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A wholly different duties, responsibilities, training. Yeah. And it is just driving me bonkers. Um, same with companies that do not put salary expectations on their job thing. That is 100% so they can lowball you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Or they can get the person who is so desperate for a job. They're like, oh, I'll do it for 35,000 a year. Knowing that that job is, should be paying more. No one's going to ever listen to me, but do not apply for jobs that do not give their salary requirements. Just don't. They're going to screw you. They uh -huh. want you to lowball. All of those should start at 65. Yep. Minimum. Anyway, that's my little rant. Probably guaranteed that anyone who was like, he does this show. I wonder what he's like as a marketing person. I'm all like, it's a bag. Or it does get me a job. Who knows? I want to hire that eat a bag, man. <laughs> <laughs> he tells it like it is. I don't, but whatever. I don't know. I, I've, I've still gone for jobs that don't tell you right away what the pay is, but I, I am very clear about like, this is the window of money. I need this many dollar hairs to, to agree to any of this. Right. And, uh, you know, and then they can take it or leave it. I mean, sure. And I also don't mind ones that post, um, you know, salary is, um, an industry standard because there are places you can go and get accurate industry standard pay, you know, the range. Okay, that's fine too. Cause then I, because they all want you to give them a number and they're all really, really hoping you go so much below what they're willing to do. Right. Uh -huh. uh, the other I one have, is DOE. Yeah, like, you know, piss off DOE. I'm like, I've never gotten that. I've never been offered the top range DOE and I have so much E you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, and whenever you say, like, I see a lot of hourly jobs, it'll be like, you know, uh, pay range is $15 an hour up to 20 an hour, depending on experience. And I'm like, they're not bringing anybody in at 20 ever, 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 ever. Nope. That's just a sucker you into like, oh, I could start at 20 bucks an hour. They're not going to do that. Nope. Yeah, nope. Anyway. anyway. The, job market, the job market sucks. It's not great. No, it's... Uh, hey, on the show, besides complaining about capitalism, we're going to talk about Star Wars and Loki again. 
We're going to keep giving <laughs> Disney free free content or free support from whatever. It is the summer. There's not really a lot else we could be talking about right now. Well, although <laughs> a couple of years ago, it would be like we could talk about movies that are hitting in theaters or events or conventions, and we're still not there, so... We would have all gone to see Black Widow in the theater over the weekend with each mm -hmm. other, most likely. Yeah, yeah, probably. I think uh, that's close to going. But mm. then I slept in. Yeah, I'm still not. I'm, I, I managed. I, I managed an outdoor barbecue party this weekend, so oh, yeah. I'm still not at. I'm yeah. still not at theater. Um, yeah, I get that. But again, like if I'd have gone, it'd have been like at 10 30 at a matinee when there's like me and like three other nerds that think just like me sure there's nobody there then and, okay like it if i was available on a tuesday at 11 o'clock yes that that would be fine because yeah. then it would be the theater for one um yeah i'm trying to save up all my mojo for sitting in a theater for when Sh shang chi arrives oh yeah yeah, if you're guys, gonna, if you're gonna hold out. Yeah. God I forget which one. Simu, Simu Long did a Fast and Furious. He just put Vin Diesel in the Shang Chi cast and says, "Yeah, I saw that." <laughs> um, I forget though if Snake Eyes comes out before Shang Chi, both of which are high on my man. I must watch. I saw another trailer for Snake Eyes, like on. TV of all things, because I don't mm -hmm. really watch regular television, but I was watching the Euro Cup finals, mm -hmm. whatever on was it Sunday? And yeah. you know, soccer, you get all of your ads in the break in the half because they don't stop. So you get 20, you get 50 minutes worth of ads and the rise and the, the snake eyes movie, a new trailer on there. I was like, man, that looks sharp. So did you um there is a tweet from Larry Hama that went around. No. Larry Hama got to see see the movie. Oh, sweet. Did he like it? Oh, he fully endorses it. Nice. He's like, it is not the story that I wrote. It is not the backstory that I came up with. It is, however, faithful to the character of Snake Eyes and modernizes it for the audience of today in a way that I can respect. It's like cool. it's got Joes in the form of Scarlet. It's got Cobra in the form of the Baroness. It's it's a great martial arts movie all of okay. the character it's like all of the actors that they brought in give gravitas to the characters that needed it nice so yeah, if larry, larry hama says it's fine it's it's fine yeah and he ought to know and i don't feel like he would be towing any company line if he didn't like it he maybe maybe not just wouldn't say anything yeah or like what you think of it you know mr hama no comment like that i feel like, like well that it was a movie yeah <laughs> and that yeah yeah uh every story i've heard about larry hama tells me that he is n not a bullshitter no in that way yeah well and it, it's, it's a pretty no-nonsense review he's not like i loved it it was great he's like it's not what i would have done it's you know it, but it's got it's got what it needs and it was an enjoyable no, it was specifically, it's not what he's already done. Right. Sorry, I was just paraphrasing. <laughs> yeah. But yes. That he's, like, he, he liked he's, it. So. That he already did for like what? Like 230 issues or some crazy mm -hmm. amount. Long time. Did he ever write for the IUW stuff? Did he ever pop over and do a couple stories? I don't know. I don't either. Hmm. Um. I think I think Snake Eyes is before Shang Chi. I don't know why. I just think that. Mm. I think you're right. I feel like I actually feel like Snake Eyes is this month. Yeah. The um, other thing that I'm really trying to hold myself together for for in theater seating is the HP Lovecraft Film Test. Ooh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's October. Did you get your passes? Yes. In that. I saw Andrew Migliori today. <laughs> well, that's how you got your passes. I, I wasn't asking. <laughs> He's just like, oh, sure, you're done. I'm like... Did, did I, you I remind said, him you've got co-hosts? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to remind my co-hosts that we should have uh, Gwen and Brian on. Oh, yeah, totally. To talk about it. 
We definitely should because I don't. And then I think we've done that once. Yes, we have. Did we do it for Lovecraft or for horror? For horror fest, I don't remember. I don't remember either. No, yeah. doesn't matter. We should have them on. Mm-hmm. Go away. Yeah, that'd be cool. I haven't been to Lovecraft in years. Neither have I. Yeah. Be it's cool been again. it's been a decade. Oh, wow. It's been that long for me, but close. Like, I haven't gone the entire time I've worked at Guardian, and that's been seven and a half years. And I know that I missed a few years before that. Why did I miss the years before that? Fright Town. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. That's why you used to be never be available in October. Oh, and then Zach uh, is also mentioning, uh, don't they also do the erotic horror film fest? I don't think so. I I'm not one I'm not the one to answer that. I don't I don't know how to you're gonna have to narrow that down. Oh. Which which erotic horror film fest? <laughs> the one in Portland. I don't know. <laughs> narrow it down. <laughs> See, erotic seeing... horror. I did. I did say erotic horror film fest, right? Mm. Yes. Okay. Still need to narrow it down. <laughs> can you? Can you please? I feel like just there are two of here? them. Oh, hi, cat. <laughs> it's cat day. Apparently, it's cat day. Yeah. Somebody yeah. got switched to like wet food from a can instead of dry kibble, and she's being a really picky bitch about it. Uh, so now she just wants me to give her treats. Mm hmm. So yeah, so sorry, Aaron. If you have to like edit the audio because you hear, <laughs> that's that's my cat. Sorry. That's that's fine. Whatever doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I don't know the erotic film fest, but I'm not sure. All right. Uh, maybe uh, he Zach says maybe he's maybe he needs to do some more research. I think what he's talking about is. Uh, the Ginol Fest. Oh, but that's not specifically erotic. It's just a horror film fest. Correct, and it is not run by the folks no. that run the HP Lovecraft Film Fest. Yeah, no. I mean, it's based on the Ginol Theater, which usually just involves blood and tits, which is mm -hmm. kind of what it does. Uh, I do know who runs that, and they are former members of Fright Town. Uh, I, uh, I, because I the horror community briefly. is just as incestuous as the comic book industry as, as anyone else yep. right yeah uh, i think i yeah. met them briefly the year that i participated in a in the making of a guignol film mm -hmm. yeah and those are also like i mean horror in this town is there's like 12 people that you need to know if you don't know at least half of them then you don't actually know anybody in horror in this town. <laughs> I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah, it's probably true. And we know half of them. <laughs> that is also true. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, those are things we would be doing if it was a regular summer, Bean. Yes. Right. <laughs> Go away. Uh, well, do we want to just dive into, like, what do you want to do first? Do you want to uh, deal with the TVA or do you want to deal with the Empire? Both are evil. They were both really good episodes, so I'm like, mm, they were. Start? They were both dense episodes. Yes. Very dense. Well, um, I don't know about. I don't know if I would have described the Bad Batch episode as dense, but there's there's a lot that you can do to tangentially with that one, and so let's start. Let's start with the Bad Batch. Okay. Okay. So I, to recap, this is almost an episode not of the Bad Batch because they show up once. They were bad adjacent. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> and, and they are they're simply doing a side hustle for Sid, dropping off guns to freedom fighters. This is actually about the um, planet of Ryloth yeah. and the Twi'lek population and how they are becoming accustomed to the new empire. Or not, as it were. Or not. Mm. And as a lot of people may remember from Clone Wars, the Ryloth was going through some shit. 
Yeah. During Clone Wars. The- uh, it's what happens when your planet is on like on a major trade route between mm-hmm. two powers. <laughs> so I believe and- that episode was called uh, The Devil's Deal. I think something like that, yeah. Um, and we get to see some some more or again familiar faces. That was exciting. Is that the word you use? I I immediately just felt crestfallen. <laughs> like, Why? Uh, because this is clearly part one of a two part, and I really don't. It was hard enough starting the series watching. Caleb Doom watch his master get killed. I don't want to watch Harrison Dula lose her mom. I don't want to watch that. Oh, is that what happens? And I yeah. think that's is this, exactly is this when what's it happens? going to happen. Uh, yes. well, you think we're getting a second shit. part to this? Yeah, I yeah. do. I mean, it doesn't uh, really... If, it, if you're not going to get more of her backstory, then they could have just put anybody into this plot yeah versus rather than a, a familiar character i also am starting to wonder how much of the bad batch is being used to prime people for upcoming live stuff like book of boba the rangers because it's probably still going to happen season three of the mandalorian all of it yes right i'm like oh yes. we're gonna see an adult we're gonna see an older hera eventually like she's gonna show up mm-hmm. um which in that timeline spoilers if you haven't finished rebels by the book of boba and no wait when does she have it seriously spoilers if you haven't seen the end of rebels okay you can't cover your ears with your headphones bean i know but the Uh, alternative is to take them off the very ending of rebels is that like the very very end is that post Jedi? We don't know. It is post we don't know Jedi. Post. We don't know when. Okay. It, it's a, but the time period needed is plenty for there to be the character that you're talking about. Right. That, um, we're inter- that literally you're introduced in the final episode like really fast. Oh, shit. Yep. Yeah. God damn it, I gotta finish that show. Yes, yes you, you do. do. I know, I know. Um, the worst. Yeah, yes. I because that would make them older. Not like older, older, but like n- not by much. Like right. these people are all peers. Like, uh, but not that one tiny character I'm referencing. Like literally the smaller version. No, they would be about five years old. Right. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But Hera would be in her 40s. Like, Ahsoka is in her 30s. Boba's supposed to be in his 40s. Um, By the Mandalorian timeline. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That which is right. Which is when, like, Book of Boba Fett, right. Mandalorian, and Rangers are all... And, the, Rangers. Still the, and Ahsoka are all the same timeline. Right. Yeah, they're all within this one, mm-hmm. like, super chaotic moment which is actually a fun moment in the Star Wars universe to explore. The New Republic really hasn't solidified any form of power except maybe in some of the core worlds. Yep. You know, we've still got, you know, I mean, we've still got the Imperials running around. So, I mean, so. One of these days, I'm just going to print out a big, on on the longest piece of paper I can find or just like tape a bunch of them together and just like map out the Star Wars timeline so I can visually see it whenever I want. I know it's on the internet. I've pulled it up. I've watched like, hour-long videos oh. about the timeline but that's i can't retain that much lore no i think I you can be, just and i want to be able to quick reference it i think you can just go to like starwars.com and there's literally i think one of the things is like here's an image like I'm literally it's a, a break this it's whole like, time i think so yeah there yeah i've seen multiple timelines the, the trick with me is if I'm not charting that out, if I'm not writing that down, it doesn't stick. If I'm just reading it, right? Uh, if I f- like, it, it's why I can write an entire grocery list out by hand, and then forget it at home and get everything that was on the list from memory. That's how I 
used to study. I'm like, I don't like pour over my books over and over again. I take notes while I'm reading my text and then Mm -hmm. maybe I'll review my text and I'll highlight key elements. So I'm like super, like, it's super reductive. Like I write down highlights from the text and then I highlight highlights from my notes. And so it's like 10% of the information, but it's what you need to, to keep it in your brain. Um, we also learned uh, Chopper, still a murdered bot. Or always that was, was. That was another thing that I wasn't quite ready for. It's like, oh, oh, wait, you discovered Chopper when you were a kid? <laughs> right. Oh, that's even heavier. Like, that means she was a child and is in possession of a droid with PTSD. Yeah. So, like, where did he come from before that? He he was a Y-Wing droid. Yeah, he's old during the Clone Wars. Um, so he's been around. He's been around a long time. Like he's, he's never been least, mind wiped. He's two generations um, ahead of R2-D2's model of astromech. Mm. Ahead or behind? I mean... Uh, Back. Yeah. Yeah. Pre- predates. Yes. Yeah. He is an earlier model by at least two models. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he has never been mind wiped and ma- or memory wiped. Mm-hmm. And that messes with droids. Like, that, we see it over and over again. That's... <laughs> it's funny t- watching things like uh, Westworld. Mm-hmm where they kind of touch on why it's important to wipe memory on synthetic beings is that at least in the, the the thesis of Westworld humans have imperfect memories. They remember th- elements Bits and pieces, but it's clearly in the past they know that it's it's not right now when you are a machine that has perfect memory you cannot discern past present and future from when it's occurring because to you all of those things happen right now right they have the e- they have equal amount of um clarity in your mind mhm so the question of is this now is relevant to androids androids of any type Right. So. <clears throat> Sorry, yeah. I may have I may have finished the, the last season of Westworld yesterday, and I haven't watched any of Westworld. So. It's asking some interesting questions. I know it's, it's a, one of those things. It's a I'll get to it show. It's mm-hmm. really good. It's it's very very good. Yeah, it's a I'll get to it show. I know. It's worthwhile to get to like getting to it now because there is a fourth season coming, but we don't know when soonish. So you can easily mainline uh, the first three. All right. We'll check it out. Yeah. But yeah, it was nice to see chopper. I just, mm-hmm. I, fe- I feel so bad for that droid. And I <laughs> did not like it at the beginning of rebels because it's just like, why, why is this? Why, why do we just have this irritating grumpy old droid? And, as you learn his backstory, it's like, oh, you're, you're, uh, you're messed up, but yeah. you're not like, you're not just an angry murder bot. You have, you're reacting to <laughs> things. Yeah. <laughs> you're reacting to a lot. Unlike R2, who is just a murder bot. He is a murder bot. <laughs> he loves murdering people. <laughs> and then beat booping about it. Mm-hmm. Um, just like that. Um, yeah, it was a good episode, considering the Bad Batch weren't really even in it. Um, I really enjoyed the interaction between Hera and Omega on the ship. Yeah, it was that was real. Great. It was real sweet. It was real nice. Um, she doesn't get to interact with kids that often, and so she does not always have a very childlike perception of the world. Mm-hmm. And And that can be a little bit sad, because children have... A, a much more positive and hopeful perception of the world 
Mm-hmm. It's just like a little more like whimsy to it. You know, like, oh, flying is a feeling. Right. And and an adult might not, maybe they, maybe they started out that way, but you know, the real world drills all of that out of you. And you're like, you push the buttons, you read the book, we go. Right. Let's go. Well, and she's also a clone, which means she's genetically created to, I know what this does. What do you mean there's a feeling to it? Mm-hmm. I've been I've been genetically coded to mm-hmm. figure this stuff out. Right. Um, they kind of remove the sense of wonder from the clones, which is why when they break away, they can start to have those moments, but it doesn't come naturally to them, you know? Almost just stepped um, on my own dog's head. I just, I love that part. She's like, this is my room, you know, when we're not getting shot at or chased. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of, it was very sweet. I thought that whole interaction was, and it just made me go, oh, oh, we're going to get to see both of you in live action, aren't we? That's oh, gonna Yeah, be I think so. <laughs> and like, it, all of these roads lead to Thrawn. Yeah. And I feel like they're just generating all of these characters that we're that some we already know and love, some we're getting to know and we love. And then there's going to be a war with Thrawn and not everyone is going to make it out. (laughs) Yeah, I think the only thing that kind of bugs me about what we're going to get with creating like some really good characters that you're now connecting with, all these characters, you know, coming out of like the Filoni verse, as it were, or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. um, is that, like in the end, we still know that there's the sequel trilogy out there. So like, it's all going to feel like for not unless whatever Filoni has planned, whatever these live action movies have planned, eventually start to break away from the mechanisms of what becomes the new order and the resistance. Mm-hmm. Um in a way, it's funny, even though Filoni's creating all these characters that are from the past, his version of Star Wars, along with the crew that, you know, the writers that work with them and the directors and whatnot, is actually moving Star Wars forward. Yeah. I mean, there are moments of the sequel trilogy that I adore, mainly all of The Last Jedi. But those three movies are just a nostalgia bath. That's, that's all they are. Apart from some of the stuff Ryan Johnson asks in The Last Jedi, we're just... Hey, you like this 40 years ago? You're going to like it again. Yeah. Um, so it's like, okay, you didn't move anything forward. Like, um, you made Vader's sacrifice at the end of Jedi, his actual redemption moment, utterly pointless. The Emperor didn't die. Mm-hmm. Y- yeah. yeah uh, it's true. All, all of it, all of it became pointless. Uh, it, um, and, you know, Abrams has this thing about not liking couples to be happy. So, of course, he then makes Solo and Leia estranged because, you know, why would they? I, yeah. This will quickly become an Abrams rant for me if I'm not careful. All right. Which, so moving of on. Which Denise is sick of. <laughs> well, what else do we have to say about this episode specifically? I, I still think it's part one of two. You think so? Think, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Like, they've been very good about, we're not telling you what next week's about. So maybe it'll be back to normal. Or maybe we're going to see Hera's mother get killed. I don't. Oh. <laughs> mm. uh, did you kind of notice this also on this episode? Um, uh, why am I going blank on the quote evil clone? Um, not Echo. Um, How's hair? Crosshair, thank you. Hmm. Have you noticed that his stormtrooper uniform is getting darker and darker? Mm-hmm. Like physically, like it's like a dark gray now. I'm like, is he going to lead into the Death Troopers eventually? Is like, is that one of Filoni's kind of like? Err? Maybe you know, because there's a few times even now the clones are not still completely cool. I, that the stormtrooper clones. Mm-hmm. There's been times you've seen them kind of like hesitate of like, oh, wait, the people in Ryloth were like our allies, but Crosshair has no problem pulling that trigger. Nope. Um, and it's always kind of implied that at least well, what we saw in Rogue One, like the Death Troopers are worse than regular Stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. You know, 
hence why they had no problem. Like, yeah, I'll find the kid and kill it. Sure. No problem. Done. Shot the mom. Let's go shoot the kid now. Um, so I don't know if that's just a weird little thing he's leaning into. What was the name of the clone that uh, was stationed on Ryloth? Uh, um... I forgot. Oh, uh... But he gave himself a name, so he's... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he clearly has doubts about this. Yes. Yeah. But I forgot his name also. Sorry. I, I feel like he's going to become a part of uh, Rex's resistance. Yeah, you think so? Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, saw, I, I didn't end up reading it, but now I wish I had. I saw a headline that like was like, oh, this is a hint that this this particular clone trooper is, is going to have a more significant role. And I'm I assuming say, like, it's, it's that they had a name for him. Hugo or Hugh, but I'm, I could be way off. Beck said I think she starts with an H, and that sounds kind of right. Mm. Back. Um, yeah, I think it was a really solid episode. And we've got, that was episode 11 or 12? 11. 11. So we've got five more to go in this season. They're flying by. Well, not as much as our next one we're going to talk about. Oh, man. Loki, we got one <laughs> more to go. Well, we have one since we go. record the show literally one week before, yeah, we, uh, we have one more to go. Um, man, shit went down in uh, episode five of Loki. There is so much that happens in this episode. Yeah. Uh, and it felt very full and complete, if that makes sense. Like, there was Hauser no. Was that guy's there... name? What was it? it? Sorry, I just found it. Hauser. Hauser. I thought you said Hoser for a minute. I'm like. What? Also, yes. next, the next episode is called Rescue on Ryloth. I'm oh. sorry. Called it. Oh, yeah. Moms. I'm. Hera's I'm... going to watch Mama die. Oh, man. Yeah, here is, she's going to get bambied. Aw. She still has her dad, whom she later is estranged from. Mm. Mm. Sorry, not helping. Oh, I, oh, oh man. Yeah. This also makes me think we're going to see Ezra's parents. We're going to see the Bridgers at some point. Yeah. It goes well for them, too. Mm-hmm. Wait, has that when when we first meet Ezra in Rebels, hasn't he only been on his own for like a couple, just a couple years? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I guess we could meet his parents like prior to him being born, mm -hmm. or or very very young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I sidebarred. We were we were moving to Loki. We That's are fine. moving to Loki. So this one, like, yeah, this episode picks right off where it ends with him with the other Lokis. Right, and he is um, at the the void at the end of time. The void, yes. Um, where all things that are prune go to be eaten by a guard dog cloud. Yeah, so, like a uh, like a cloud dragon monster. Who is, uh, if you know the comics, does has a tangential connection to Kang the Conqueror. Oh, does he? Yes. So I will say right off the bat, if episode six reveals that Kang is pulling the strings, I'm actually going to be very freaking annoyed. What is that? Because that is only appealing to Marvel, like to comic dorks like me. There's no payoff in terms of the narrative because no one would know who the fuck Kang is. Now, so if you want to give me Kang as like an end credits teaser, fine. They, I haven't double checked this, but I have heard through uh, Marvel rumors, Kang is supposed to be the villain for um, Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Quantumania. Yeah. Uh, so they've already cast a Kang. Like, allegedly, I think it's one of those things that, like, there hasn't been an official announcement, but we all know it's what's his name from Lovecraft Country, the lead, the lead star. That actor was one who's. Um, I don't know who that is. Uh, yeah, him. Okay. I'm trying to think of his name, and I'm not going to get there. So. Uh, Jonathan Majors. Okay. So, like, I think it's more likely that they will do a uh, a teaser 
or an end mm-hmm. credits Kang um, than it is he's been behind it the entire time. Right. Kang feels easy. I don't feel like this show is... Nothing about it so far has been... Tells me it's going to be an easy solution. Easy right. or obvious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and again, if it doesn't necessarily make a lot of narrative sense, like just because we know that there's going to be uh, a Kang, there, th- that Kang is going to appear in a different part of the franchise, mm-hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be the guy here. Right. And I don't think he's going to be. I, I'm just saying if they were to do that, that would be very annoying. Yeah, it would feel um, weird. Yeah, it's not earned at all. It's, it's a, just a shout out to the old comic fans. That's kind of it. Mm-hmm. Um, that, I think they've already done that shout out to old comics fans. This with, issue was packed yeah, with that shit. This with episode. Richard E. Grant <laughs> as classic Loki. So he good. was so good. He even got the know. pose down the, the whole. And him going out yelling, glorious purpose. Oh, uh, so good. Mm hmm. That was that was a moment. Like I said, like I don't really know him for, from anything really, but he he was great in this role in mm-hmm. like pr- playing out this this version of Loki that I don't really know anything about. Still loved it. It's right. how Loki has existed up until they cast Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. I mean, and he's rocking that diaper suit. Oh man, it's the mm-hmm. best. <laughs> and there are photos of the uh, there are selfies of himself uh getting in and out of and in between that costume all over twitter he's just like i'm having so much goddamn fun it's like i saw the one where he's like when i was in my 20s my dad gave me a hard time about you know playing adventures in ridiculous speedo suits or you know something like that and like, here really I am, 40, a... 40 years yeah. later, still loving it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Richard E. Grant is one of those actors that you have probably seen him in a lot more things than you would ever go. You, you'd look at his IMDb and go, oh, I've seen that. Wait, he like was he's in just that? one of those guys, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's a, uh, he's a, oh, I have seen him here. He's he the... was in Logan, Game of Thrones. Oh, everything but he has 138 acting credits just so you know most importantly he was in hudson hawk he was in spice world yes mm-hmm. like he takes absolutely ridiculous roles um but then he puts things together like well of course he was classic loki who else could have been <clears throat> right but mm-hmm. no one could have played that classic loki uh except richard e grant yeah. Well, he was in Downton Abbey, and so now I, I think I can picture the character he played. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I mean, perfect. if it was a British show or movie, he's been in it. Because mm-hmm. like, like, oh, he was in Doctor Who? I'm like, why yep. would you think he wasn't in Doctor Who? <laughs> the UK only has like 14 actors, and they're all in everything together. Yep. I love it. I'm not, that is not a complaint or a bash. I am. Yeah. Um, watching Alligator Loki eat President Loki's hand was <laughs> magical. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. let's back up a little bit. We got so into Richard E. Grant. I, I do want to outline that all of the Lokis were pretty damn great. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Boastful Loki, Kid Loki. Kid um, Loki. I love the way he, like, carts around that alligator. He's just like, like, come on, buddy, we got to get out of here. And is the only one that has killed Thor. I know. <laughs> oh, did you, do you see he... Hiddleston having like yet another existential crisis in this series when he hears that? So you know he's in the show, the episode, right? Who's in the episode? Hiddleston did a voice in this last episode. Or not Hiddleston, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Hemsworth. Which voice? So remember when they're doing that Simpsons thing when they're showing the dirt as they're traveling through the dirt to get to the uh-huh. episode? Mm-hmm. So, does he play his own Frog Thor? That voice of Frog Thor going, that was Hemsworth. (laughs) He recorded new dialogue for that. That's fantastic. A a fucking course. Which gives me hope that one day we may get an animated Pet Avengers movie. I want that so bad. 
you have no idea how bad I want it. Oh, I also saw a funny tweet about how like people were theorizing what, well, you know, how you in that scene of like passing through dirt, uh, mm -hmm. you see all those lunch trays, like cafeteria meal mm -hmm. trays. Um, the thesis is people at the TVA, they don't want to bust their trays back to wherever you mm -hmm. put them when you're done at the cafeteria, so just, fucking, just... just fucking prune your tray and they all just start piling up yeah. forever and ever. This thing had such great little shout outs, like the Polybus arcade in the background. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the fact the that Kid Thanos Loki copter. is- The Thanos copter. I had to rewind to make sure I saw this, but yes, Kid Loki is drinking Ecto Cooler, which was fantastic. That was a chef's kiss moment Oh, for is me. that his juice, his juice box? No, but that's something, if you were a certain kid during like the early nineties of a certain age, all you wanted was Ghostbusters Ecto Cooler. Mm -hmm. from high C like that company threatened like one time joked about bringing Ecto Cooler back when the all women Ghostbusters movie came out they're like well maybe we should bring back Ecto Cooler and like the internet of a certain age group lost their mind and then they brought it back they did and it was delicious I, I was way out of that age group but I was still you know I was the 15 16 year old that was like I'm gonna go buy some Ecto Cooler yep Another, I wouldn't call it an Easter egg, but just like a little thing that I noticed. And I don't know if I missed it in earlier episodes or what, but um, in the TVA, some of their structures have these like logos on them. It's, it's an hourglass. It's two inverted triangles, you know, mm -hmm. pointing towards each other, but it's a continuous line. So it is, it is both an hourglass and a Mobius strip slash also like the eternity, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. double loop. Uh, because the slogan is for all time, always. Always, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's uh, so clever. How did I not catch that? That's cool. I'm starting to buy in more and more on uh, Mobius being a Loki. He doesn't know it. Oh, that's an interesting thing. Because, because Loki survived. And why out of everyone ever pruned did Mobius, survive. Mobius go to the void? Oh, also shout out to the USS Eldritch, which is one of the greatest old <laughs> urban legends of all time. I had the, to learn about that one after the battleship. That. Yeah, I don't know this. It's the one. There's so many different versions of it, but it's allegedly the one that during World War II, if I remember correctly, the U.S. was testing out different types of atomic power, and there are all these rumors that the USS Eldritch was the ship this was being tested on during the era of the Manhattan Project, and in the middle of the Pacific, in an ex, in a, like a nuclear blast, it vanished. And the government has spent decades wiping out all the existence of the USS Eldritch, its crew, everyone Records. connected to it, everything. Hmm. The fact that it would be named the USS Eldritch just tells right away, like, well, no, this is clearly a bullshit story, regardless of what you believe in like <laughs> weird science technology. The Navy would never name something like, okay, hear me out. You're, you're <laughs> just asking for your ship to get disappeared in the ocean. Yeah, it's like, calling a, it's like calling your submarine the USS Cthulhu and being like, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. Naming your plane the Earhart. Yeah. Although now, damn it, I want to write a story about the USS Cthulhu. We already know how I, it's going to end. Do we? <laughs> it's wrapped in Eldritch Mysteries. Um, I, yeah, Mobius being a, a Loki variant is an interesting theory. Mm -hmm. huh. um, I'm also really starting to believe that um, Ravona is the villain. And I also starting to think that Ravona is a Loki. And wants to be the Loki. That's the obsession with hunting down Loki variants. Um, I suppose if they're playing like a really long a really long game because ravona has been in the TVA since she was pretty young. Yeah. Well, so she would have had to like infiltrated under a different persona and what like- it, What would not be the greatest mischievous get off joke of all time if you play the longest game possible that starts at the beginning of time and ends where time ends? Mm -hmm. I don't, uh, I don't like discount that it's, it's possible and that there is logic to that, but I don't yeah. personally see it. Mm -hmm. I just like doing it. No, it's just fun. Um, I'm still going to go with it, it is 
it is a Loki variant, the timekeeper in charge of everything. And their end goal is to get our variant Loki to a place where he has moved beyond himself because that's what's going to break time and space and reality so that all of the Lokis can be alive. Right. I almost wish that I had watched anything that Loki features in up until that, you know, that part of the Avengers movie. Mm -hmm. Because I, because that, that part I feel is like, not maybe not obvious, but like the bare minimum of the purpose of this show is to identify how Loki went from being a villain to kind of a good guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's interesting that like we know where the the MCU's timeline goes with Loki and how he went from Thor to Avengers to Dark World um, to Ragnarok and then to Infinity War what that arc was and how he became the hero I feel like um, our TVA Loki mm -hmm. is actually ev an even more enlightened version of that mm -hmm. like he's the other one got to end up becoming the hero because he enjoyed doing, like he was getting the same attention, but now he was doing it for doing good things. Whereas right. the TVA Loki is done nothing but introspection mm -hmm. and come to very, you know, like has had very painful realizations. Mm -hmm. And especially them. in this episode, there's like so many moments of like, Oh, there's the like, how is he doing that while old Loki is is like literally just like bringing up entire cities to distract the Elias. Right. How is he doing that? I, I think we're stronger than we realize. Mm -hmm. Like just mm -hmm. out of out of nowhere. Like you, you don't I don't feel like you necessarily see him kind of processing these things throughout the course of the episode up until that point, because it's kind of chaotic. Yep. But but yeah. But Sylvie wasn't there for these other instances of these other Lokis using their powers. So she doesn't understand. And he's like, I think we just have more than, than we think we do. Mm -hmm. But then right around, you turn right around and Sylvie's like, you're going to help me do this enchantment. And he's like, I don't know how to do it. And she's like, I know you can because we're the same. Mm -hmm. Which, ah. Uh, right. So good. <laughs> Yeah. That by itself, even like independent of like, you know, a Loki not knowing his own power or this and that, just the, just the concept of like, we are the same is such a, I think such a special moment for someone like Loki who doesn't really have at this point in the character's, you know, timeline, I guess, not a lot of like positive, strong relationships. Like, yeah, he's got his brother and they love each other, but also they try to kill each other and shit. So mm -hmm. well, Loki tries to kill him. Thor has never yes. tried yes. to kill Loki. You no. know what I mean. Um he tries to kill everyone in his family, more or less. There's a time he, he turns into a snake and he knows that I can't resist snakes, and I picked him up, he went, I'm a snake, and I picked him. So that was such a good joke. <laughs> they went, Ah, it's me, Loki. Stab me. We were ten. <laughs> <laughs> Like you were ten, you were ten over a thousand years ago, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that is from an actual myth. That is from one of the North story, Norse stories. Norse stories. That, That's yeah. great. I love that. He was I can't resist snakes. I picked it up. <laughs> I mean, who can resist a snake? Which, which always like that entire bit just made me sit there going, but "That's is that why you get eaten by the Jorgamander?" <laughs> because you just can't resist snakes. <laughs> you weren't fighting it. You were just trying to pet it the whole time. <laughs> it's like, that's okay. Um, cool. <laughs> cool. Cool, 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 uh, yeah. cool. In the chat, Norm is, is pointing out, like, I think this is the episode where Loki, I th 
I think there's a typo in here, but what I think Norm is saying is that I think this is the one where Loki realizes that he loves Sylvie. And they do have some good moments together. Yeah. Um, and then also uh, Bex says, if they get to the Citadel, Citadel and there's not a Loki, or if there's a Loki when he's not dressed as Oz, uh, they're going to be disappointed. And I, now that you've put it in my head, I too will be disappointed. Very, very specifically, Bex will be low key disappointed. Uh, oh no. I think Bex and I should go drinking and making <laughs> bad puns. That will end well. Yes. Gloriously. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So I'm excited to see where they're going. I, I am too. I have it my looks like thoughts. a magical city. It's um Oh man, it actually has a name. It's from the comics. I'm trying to remember. Is it just the Citadel? Ah, uh, I can't remember now. But keep talking. I'm gonna look it up because it's trying to be nice. <laughs> do, do, do. Yeah. Um did I did I point this out last week that if you look at the on uh Disney Plus where it um, where it shows you that it, like you can watch the Marvel Universe in chronological order of when it happens. So right. like it starts with Captain America and then goes to Captain Marvel and then everything. Mm -hmm. When you get to the end of it, it ends with Endgame, and then the first show that takes place after Endgame is Loki, and then One Division, and then uh, yeah, Captain America: Winter Soldier. Yeah. Um, yeah, they apparently have been working on this show longer also. Interesting. But that COVID stuff slowed them down a lot. Um, oh, that's just... Uh, go ahead. I, said, I, thought, I thought Loki belonged at, at Avengers. That was where he was taken from, but where this is all... But to their timeline it still takes place as part of Endgame because it was the Avengers story. Yeah. Where they were going back and back and forth through time. Yeah. Oh, right. Gotcha. All yeah. right. Uh, the thought is that that city is uh, Chronopolis. <clears throat> Chronopolis? Which is, yeah, which is the home of Kang. Chronopolis. But, I don't know. That looks like Hogwarts to me, but I know that's not going <laughs> to I hope not. That well, place yes. is that place is dead to me. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, part of me, I've been sleeping really badly lately, but part of me is like, do I just stay up till midnight tonight? Don't do that. No, I won't do that. Because then I'll still wake up at six in the morning and yeah. be useless all of Wednesday. I, come <laughs> home. I have to get up and go to work. I would say I was... I was almost tempted, but that yawn indicates, no, no, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> and I'm going to go to bed. Oh, right. I'm already tired. <laughs> also. Right. So since none of us watched uh, Black Widow. Oh, that's right. You had a fun uh, exercise for us. Yeah, I, I right. wanted to see if we could play the game of what do we all think Black Widow is actually about, even though we don't know anything about the movie. <laughs> Damn it. I meant to watch the trailer again because I hadn't seen it in a while just as like a, a primer for this particular activity and I didn't I mean, do that. So. Pretty much all, all the trailers show you is it takes place somewhere in Europe. It has um, Hopper. Natasha. Hmm? It has Hopper because um, now we know what happened to him at the end of season three of Stranger Things. He That's became right. a Russian superhero. He became yeah. the Red He became the Red Guardian. Yep. Um, and uh, Rachel Amanda, Weiss is Amanda Pugh, Rachel White, yeah, yeah, Florence, Florence Pugh, Florence Pugh, not Pugh. Amanda Pugh, as opposed to Florence Pugh, Pugh, yeah, yes. Are um, you confusing her with Amanda Seafried? Maybe yeah, that's I, I can they, see that. Do yeah. they look alike? Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're generic white girls, yeah, blonde. 
Um, one of them is a much better, never mind, that was mean of me. See, one's a much better performer than the other. Really? Seatbeat's good. I'm thinking of somebody else. I think you are. I think thinking I mean, of a different Amanda. I mean, Amanda Seafried is probably the second worst performer in Les Mis. I'll give you that. Yeah, but she's great in Jennifer's body. Yes. And she's great in Mean Girls. Oh, yeah, she's really good in that. Um, uh, okay, so maybe she's not a bad performer. Definitely a bad, not a good singer. Maybe I'm thinking of Amanda Bynes. Oh, you're thinking of Amanda Bynes. Amanda okay. Bynes is not a good actor. Who thinks no. about Amanda Bynes anymore? No one. <laughs> I was thinking of Amanda. I was thinking of the other Amanda, but then when my brain went not a good actor, I think my brain then turned into Amanda Bynes. Yep. Uh, I think this is all about Natasha cleaning up the red room shit. Mm-hmm. I I know that the movie takes place in the '90s, so when it gets set along that uh, chronology <laughs> on watching it in order that means it goes captain america captain marvel so, black widow apparently it doesn't yeah. it apparently takes place between infinity war and endgame what how come she's so airbrushed then or i could be wrong i'm not sure Let's see here. Huh. that is not what i have heard so so in my head, it's the. Um... Oh, okay, hold on. So set during Natasha's childhood, the credits prologue is 1995. After that, the bulk of the movie takes place right after Civil War. Oh, oh, after oh. Civil War. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. There you go. Very well. Kevin uh, Sachs said, "Am I confusing it with Amanda Hug and Kiss? That could also be the other Amanda." <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bart. Uh, I did want to make Why so apparently uh, David Harbour's wife, when they asked her like how they felt about him getting kind of jacked to play Red Guardian, she was apparently not a fan. What she was like, I miss my wonderfully soft and cuddly husband. I don't, and and he doesn't get super ripped and yeah, as Red Guardian. The whole point is that he's you know a little bit chunkier now. But she's like, nope, nope, nope. She's not a fan of the the Marvel workout plan. Yeah, no. She's like, nope. I want my dad bod husband back. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess the internet wasn't lying. <laughs> the only time it didn't. <laughs> so that's my only goal: it's just to beef up a little bit, but you know, keep the tum tum. Yeah. Can't believe forty five years old. And I just said keep the tum tum. I wasn't gonna say anything. I'm logging off now. I hate my life. That was awful of me. I have noticed there's been an uptick of um, dad bod cosplayers uh, playing Red Guardian to these svelte 20 and 30 year old women playing yeah. Black Widow. It's like, great. They're like, yeah, this is awesome. Wait, I get wait, to wait. Be this body for this. Awesome. Wait, go back. I want to make sure I'm understanding you clearly. People are cosplaying as characters who have dad bod, or people with dad bod are getting into cosplay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Like any any time that there's a superhero or character that is actually human formed, they're like, "Yes, I can do that." That's very nice. I mean, like the easiest one was as soon as Captain America had a beard. So many dudes with beards are like, "I can be Cap now." <laughs> right. Like Cap's not clean shaven. I I, I can be Cap. Which, I mean, I've added to my now it's added to my list. Now I can add Red Guardian because right now my three options are uh, Fat Thor, apparently, uh, Prince Voltan, which is still a goal one day, mm -hmm. uh, and now Red Guardian. I've not had the mental or emotional energy to think about good cosplay in a couple years now. You don't yeah, want me right. to cosplay as Prince Voltan because. The last thing you need is me channeling Brian Blessed like all day long. I I think I might have to get drunk, get a wig and a mustache and be a Prince Baron to your Prince of Old Town. Oh, well, now we're doing it. <laughs> that means Bean has to be Flash. Well, yeah. I guess. That means Bean is a wig. Bean, you're in a blonde wig and a Flash Gordon shirt. 
I mean, it's a pretty easy cosplay. I'll, I'll give you that. Remember, I tell people, quarterback, New York Jets. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's easy enough, I suppose. <laughs> Just work on my cheesy grin. No, you know what? Fuck it. I'll go for Ming. Ooh, there you go. In, That's something. In my mind, the idea of cosplay is to be a, at least a little bit challenged by it. So, yeah. which Damn, is why, why I, I said, don't do it. That's why I said Prince Baron rather than Ming. It's like I have the haircut for Ming, but Prince Baron would be a challenge. And we all know that Cable can rock the mustache. We saw it during the Tombstone commentary. Hmm. Ah, yes. Cowboy Cable. I mean, now hold on. Like, I love Cable and I don't want to like diminish the compliment, but we all looked good in those mustaches. That's true. I mean, that's true. But I feel like Cable was the most committed out of all of them. I, you know, you give me a bit, and I will commit to the bit. <laughs> uh, have we gone through Loki it. here? <laughs> I think so. We, no, we were done with Loki. We, yeah, we were, we were done about, with Loki. We were Black trying Widow. to do, what, trying. what is the oh, version right, of the Black Widow Black that you Widow watched thing. in your, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. my version of the Black Widow, it's I thought it was set in the 90s and she was like cleaning house. Um, uh, and that oh. at the end of all of this, basically, I, I still think that Florence Pugh is going to be the new Black Widow for the rest of the movies. Meh. Oh, I think so too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn it. It's, uh, yeah. So I was going to posit that what it is, is like they're retconning, you know, like what a big deal it was when when she just like forces herself, forces her hand, forces, blah. So her Hawkeye on the cliff of like fate or whatever. And mm -hmm. they're like fighting endlessly. This like 10 minute knockout fest to be the one to go over the cliff. And her argument was that like, you've got a kid, you've got kids and a family. Like it can't be you. I have nobody. Um, you know, and people were upset that basically you're, you're reducing women to, to having children. To, to have value mm -hmm. right and i'm like and i was thinking and i just spoiled myself on it and now i'm gonna spoil y'all spoil um yeah this the, the florence Pugh character is ba gonna be like basically like her daughter that she never had and is like someone that she's gonna like help train and groom in in her you know ninja spy ways right like little and sister they're gonna have like a mother no no i'm so if you go if, <clears throat> if i was pulling up the wikipedia to get some of the details and yes it is 1995 russian undercover agents who pose as a normal family oh no i'm sorry i totally misread That's that the no, they are, of the credit. They are yeah. sisters they are they're playing sisters mm -hmm. in this uh in as you know they're in the middle of their spy stuff I don't know. I, I felt like the Florence Pugh character looks a goodly deal younger than uh, Scarlett Johansson's character, and I thought it was going to be sort of like a, you know, like a daughter, mother daughter like relationship. Right. Yeah. Well, Rachel Weiss is supposed to be their mother, and I'm like, how is? I mean, yes, I guess. I mean, how old is Rachel Weiss? She's fifty one. And Scarlett Johansson's thirty seven. Mm hmm not out of the realm of possibility nope i'm 37 and my mom is still in her 50s i mean and also remember like they're set up as like i don't think it's a biological family thing they're set up like remember this you ever watch the series the americans oh hell yeah mm -hmm. i think no that's no the, i get that they're not yeah but like the like the, the soviets like built this family and then sent them to live in america well technically they paired two people together but they got for real married and for real had kids right i'm Yes, I mean, I mean, in Black Widow. Anyway, um, what else? Wait, that what means else? their household has two spies because her husband is uh, James Bond. Rachel Weiss is she's married to Daniel Craig. Oh, that's oh. right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's the whole family of spies. Yeah, right. Because I, I forgot that she divorced Aronofsky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, they got married in 2000. Um, I'm literally looking at her page, 2011. So I don't know. 2020 was 16 years long. I, I keep this saying is also, this is also true. Yes. Oh, I'm going to save it. 
in another tab. Also, watching Black Widow is going to make me just want to watch rewatch the Mummy. That's if I need any other reasons to always rewatch the Mummy. <laughs> it's the Mummy. She's so maybe good in that. Movie. Maybe we just all rewatch the Mummy instead. And <laughs> I was thinking, I'm like. I was pretty. I was always under the impression that the Black Widow movie, when it when it finally came, was basically just going to be um, Red Sparrow. Oh, did you watch that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> I I'm still in the the camp of the argument that if they had filmed and produced, filmed and put out Black Widow when it should have been. Scarlett Johansson would have never have done Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Plus, she already did Lucy also. So it's yeah. not like she was hangering for like, a, I need to do another action thriller. Lucy? Is that the one with Angelina Jolie? No. No, that's Salt. Ah, okay. Lucy's pretty good. At least I remember enjoying Lucy. I don't remember if I saw it or not at this point. Yeah. It's... It's another Luc Besson film. Yeah. So it takes a lot of familiar tropes and then has a conversation about evolution. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's kind of his jam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He he always plays around with um, some heavy, some loose sci-fi because he wants to talk about trying to get us to a place where we're making ourselves better. That's sweet not gonna happen i mean That's sweet you know when he's not you know trying to date 15 year olds oh okay well then fuck whatever you think yeah that that's a <laughs> that's a relatively new thing that was discovered so mm. yeah. oh yeah i'm not taking better society advice from that guy yeah i believe he actually had a kid with her too when he was like 32 so mm. jesus christ i do believe the answer they actually gave was well it's france because this was many years ago, because he's much older than 32 now. But I was like, oh, oh okay. yeah. yeah. Like, he was also married to Mila Jovovich. Yeah. When she was very young? Oh, yeah. Like, Fifth Element. They got married. They were in a relationship during Fifth Element. Uh, it's also... Right. That's why she was the lead for uh, his uh, Jean of Arc movie. Right. Yeah, Fifth Element was 97. And she's 45 now. Yeah, so she's basically my age. So at 97, she was 22. Mm. I mean, legal adult at least. Right. I'm a lot closer to having your brain fully formed than 15. Yeah. She'd also been working in movies and modeling since she was 15. Yeah, so. she's probably been around creepy old white dudes for most of her young yeah. life. Yeah. Yep. Which is why she is crazy protective of her daughter, who is also in modeling, but, you know, mom's kind of there to make sure that mistake, the same thing doesn't happen kind of thing. <clears throat> and, and mom now also has the uh, reputation of being it's like, oh, she's one of the foremost action stars in movies yep she has she, she has her own clout now mm -hmm. she is the most profitable female action star in history That's because the movies impressive. may not do well here but in europe south america and asia them resident evil movies make a fucking killing mm -hmm. do they not do well here i thought they were pretty popular no. do well enough not really I mean, how I many times? Not, I know how many times can Becca and I go see film. Resident Evil? I mean, that's kind of <laughs> half the U.S. grosses for any Resident Evil movie comes from myself and Becca. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and maybe Merrick, because doesn't she like them too? I also like them. But oh, yes. that is on cable, the four of us, we make up fifty percent of Resident Evil's domestic earnings. The box, and, and my coworker Eric. Wait, five. Also five big, of you. Five. Yep. We keep adding to it. Yep. Money to see a Resident Evil before? All of them. Not, no. no. I, I will say that I did watch the uh, Resident Evil series on Netflix. This anime? So, I, okay. It's not oh, a yeah. series. How was that? It's a two-hour movie. 
Yeah. Um, no, and I didn't think it was very good. That's because it's not. No, it's <laughs> not. And that's coming from the guy who likes all the Resident Evil movies. I like all of them except Nemesis. Nemesis is, or the second movie after yeah, the one that's, with the Nemesis. That's Nemesis. Nemesis. It's I actually God would awful. like to watch all of them, but they're not all available for streaming. They are for me. Yep. I, I think that's, them? yeah. It's confusing because Resident Evil 3, the video game, is called Nemesis. And then they call Resident Evil 2, the movie, Nemesis. No, that's it's, why a, it gets confusing. no it's called Apocalypse. Is it? Yeah, because Paul, the director, I was going to make sure I get it right. Paul W.S. W.S. Anderson. Yeah. He went through this thing where he was naming all his sequels either Apocalypse or Annihilation because Mortal Kombat 2 was Annihilation. Resident Evil 2 was Apocalypse. And AVP 2, I believe, was called Apocalypse or Annihilation. 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 It's Annihilation. I don't know why I remember that, but I do. Uh, oh, yeah. So here we go. Films in order. Resident Evil, RE Apocalypse, Extinction, Afterlife, Retribution, The Final Chapter, but then Welcome to Raccoon City. That's the new one they're doing right after now. The, after the final. Oh, yeah. That, one is the total, that one's the reboot. Ah. That is allegedly going to follow closer to the actual games now. Hmm. Anyway, in order and now the video games. Now we're just nerding out for. Now we're just on the internet. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Here. I, I just remembered. I'm wrong. I don't know that we can watch Black Widow. Oh, I can't watch Black Widow this week. But something else comes out tomorrow that we've talked about before. What? Gunpowder Milkshake. It's. <clears throat> Tomorrow. Yeah. Oh shit! We got to review that for the show next week then. I'm gonna put that on my damn calendar. Nice. Okay. So that should be fun. Yeah, I'm super jazzed for that. And apparently Netflix already greenlit a sequel. That's what I heard. Nice. They also um, ordered a pilot for something is killing the children. I saw that. Uh, That's a comic book, right? It yeah, is from Boom. Uh, Paul, or not Paul, um, James Tinney in the fourth and Werther Del Erda. Did we read that yeah. one? Did we review it? I don't think we've ever reviewed it. I've been no, reading it. Yeah. It's, I love it. So I like it a lot. Yeah. I don't remember reading it. So, like, if we didn't review it, it must just be like super popular that I know the name and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a comic book. Yeah. It's, I think Being... it got optioned a couple months ago because it, it hit a, there was a spike in speculation yeah uh, buying and then it got mm. announced a couple of days ago uh, that netflix is doing the pilot yeah and i believe it's going to be directed by the person who directed dr sleepless which was actually pretty damn good i was not expecting it to be that good interesting yeah wait uh the the shining the sequel dr sleep okay dr sleep i'm sorry jeez well, i was like what what is that Stop confusing me. Also, you know what else he directed, Bean? I think hmm. now that I think about it, it was like one of the first <laughs> horror movies we ever had like three bottles of wine and watched together. Uh, it was uh, Oculus. Oculus. Yeah. That's we got hammered watching that one, but I remember liking it. <laughs> no, it's good. It's <laughs> like 2013 it's or good. something. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a very unique premise that's not like super tired. and With Karen yeah. Gillan. And yep. it's got Karen Gillan. Hell yeah. yeah. I do remember that movie. I watched yeah. it. It was, it was all right. No, I don't think I was. I didn't think I it was give over it the extra moon. I give it extra points for Karen Gillan. Right. Sure. I think I watched it because of Karen Gillan. Probably. Like, well, I already know who you are. Let's see if you can act outside of Doctor Who. Oh, you can. It was Karen Gillan and Katie Sackhoff. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, should we wrap up the show? Uh, it's about no. that time. All right. All right so see. next week, next week we're gonna talk about gunpowder milkshake and maybe black widow. Let's do gunpowder milkshake for sure, and then probably we're gonna. We may not do bad batch because I feel like gunpowder milkshake and the Loki finale are gonna take up most of our time. I agree. I think yeah. you're right about that. So. Cool. 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 Well, and thanks we'll everybody. Work on trying to get guests. 
like, yeah, we're working on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, other I know other people. Rucka said he wants to try to come back on. His schedule's just been nuts, so I gotta I gotta hit him up again about. It'd scheduling. be really good to see him again. Yeah. It's uh, well, been especially a minute. I... Never mind. Thought I read okay. an article, but I'm not sure I read an article. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, 